I'm in my garage now and this is my Terra RC car that drives autonomously based on RTK GPS. I have a tripod with the Talisman GPS antenna that sits on a piece of wood with copper tape on it which is connected to this circuit board which has uh, two radios, one 2.4 GHz with an amplifier, one CC1120 that runs at 400 MHz it has an SDM32F4, an IMU, can transceiver and some DC-DC converters and on the back side it has an U-Blocks M8P that can do RTK GPS with the RTK computations on the chip itself. Now this one runs as a base station, so it is connected to my computer, where it is uh, well connected to this program, and have, here I can set it up. For example, I've set it up to run in first in server in mode for just a short duration and a bad accuracy because I don't care about absolute accuracy. And uh, after that, after it was served in, it started sending correction data to the car. And uh, after it, after a while, after a, well, five minutes or so, it got an RTK fix, which means that it solved all the interambiguities between uh, the car face measurements that is done for RTK GPS. And this means that relative to my base station, the car has centimeter accuracy. And uh, what I did then. I have uh, this map client. If you zoom out, you can see that this is OpenStreetMap. Unfortunately, where I live, there's not so much uh, in OpenStreetMap. Maybe we'll edit it someday, but I haven't done that. And then I was uh, putting the car in well, manual drive mode and just driving around my backyard, which is this kind of uh, red pink line. And then I added this trace. You can like put them there point by point, you can drag the points around and so on, upload it to the race to the car and put it on following this one on repeat. Since the GPS also provides a clock, you can also run the car in a timed mode so you can set the time for each of those points that is in a UTC time and then you can synchronize several cars. You can in fact add as many cars as you want. So here you see the first car can also see the 3D picture. It's quite bumpy on my backyard, so that's why it's moved like this. And then you can add more cars that will show up on the map. Now I don't have any real cars, so this one will just sit here, but you can drive many of them at the same time and also synchronize them with traces. And you can do logging and you can, uh, well, do all, all kinds of stuff with this program. If you don't have uh, an receiver like this one, and you would like to connect to Antrip, you can also do that here. You can get correction data from Antrip if there is a base station close by. The closest one to me on uh, IGS, IGS EP right now is the one at SP, which is where I work, which is 20 kilometers away. And it still works, but it's a bit far away, so it actually does a bit better if I just put the antenna out here like this. Even though uh, in this case it's quite close to my garage, so it doesn't have a full view of the sky. But even so, it just it took a couple of minutes to serve in, and then I just switched on the car, waited for it to get an RTK fix. I also tried just driving with the float and getting a fix while driving, and it also worked really well and just held the fix all the time. And now I've been driving here for like an hour or so, and it uh, maintains the fix without any problems. I don't think it has dropped it even once. So I'm uh, really quite impl impressed by those U-Blocks receivers. I also did the same things with the RTK lib and a Raspberry Pi in the car. 
and it also works, but then I used uh, one of those uh, NS RAW receivers that only does GPS. And uh, when I have settings like I have here, where I don't have full view of the sky, then uh, having GLONASS and GPS at the same time helps a lot. But uh, the other one, uh, Arctic Halib with only GPS, also works really well if you have uh, a clear view of the sky. I will try to use Arctic Halib with... Uh, with an GLONASS and GPS receiver, maybe even this Ublox one and try to compare it at some point, but uh, I haven't done that yet. On the car, you also have a circuit board like this one, that is connected uh, over canvas to the VESC, to a VESC 6, and it runs in Castle 2028 motor in senseless mode, and it also uses odometer data from the VESC that gets over the CAN, but which uh, helps quite a lot to get higher sample rate and you can uh, when the GPS performs bad, then you can kind of compensate for that. And it also uses the IMU for the yaw angle together with the GPS correction on the yaw angle on the car. So on the car you also just need one of those and a VESC 6 and you can get it running. You can also, in this GUI, if you go to the car tab, go to the settings on the car and you can adjust like the gear ratio, the turn radius and all of those things and make it fit, well, other RC cars or, well, things that have kind of Ackerman steering in this version. And you can tweak some other parameters and do like uh, hard and soft IO compensation for the magnetometer and so on. I'm not using it that much right now because it relies mostly on GPS for your correction. But uh, yeah, it works really well and I'm impressed by how well those U-blocks receivers work. If I click on follow up here in the corner, then the map will be centered around the car at the time, all the time. And when you zoom in, we can kind of see what is going on. Uh, this is the simple autopilot that I have written. It works by an algorithm called the uh, pure pursuit, which means that uh, the car will always chase a point in front of it. And uh, it does this by drawing a circle around the car, as you can see here and it tries to figure out where the circle intersects with the trace that the car is supposed to follow. And when it finds this intersection, it calculates the steering angle such that the car follows an arc that intersects with this point. And what you also can see here is that uh, the pink dot behind the car is the GPS position, which updates at 5 Hz. And the reason that a car can update much more often is because it runs odometry from the VESC between the samples and uh, this way you can uh, get much higher update rate on the position in the car and really good accuracy because odometry is much better than using for example the accelerometer, accelerometer to do interpolation and figure out the car is. Here it jumps a bit more than usual because as you saw on the lawn it's quite not so even, the car bumps around quite a bit but even so it works really well. And uh, the algorithm to drive the car runs uh, on the microcontroller on the, the circuit board like this one that is on the car and the QT program that I've written as well is only responsible for showing what is going on so I can also just disconnect and let the car run by itself getting RTK GPS position correction from this circuit board and also written for example this Mac client you can see that if I uncheck follow zoom out also did some caching for example when you zoom in somewhere where it hasn't been before then it will display place orders for the tiles and then download all the tiles and the tiles are actually rendered on uh, my server in my basement with uh, all of the open street map stuff so I can also experiment with a, with a bit of that and make like virtual traces and so on and use it uh, in this client so that's quite convenient so it has gotten dark outside and I just took the car and the tripod in here you can see the tripod with the talisman antenna, it's just copper tape that's soldered together on a piece of wood. And uh, the bigger ground plane you have, the better for RTK. And uh, here is the car, kind of the same approach for the antenna, a piece of wood with copper tape on it. And uh, on the car you have the VESC 6 and the circuit board that I showed before. I put a bit of tape on it because it was kind of wet outside and once it shut down because it got some water on it. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is switched off now, and uh, yeah, that's all there is in the car, and you don't really need this Raspberry Pi. And if you have a smaller car, 
Actually, this is a DC DC converter that is used to power the steering server. And if you have a smaller car that is a bit easier to drive, you can just connect the server to the VESC and just use a VESC connected over canvas to the circuit board and get it running like this. So, yeah, it works really well. Thanks for watching.